Hey guys, if you're shopping for knives and gear, make sure you check out the description of the video you're watching right now for links to some great online retailers. There's also individual links for knives that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I've got another really interesting knife review slash knife overview to show with you guys. This is the Olamic Cutlery Busker. I'm so excited to finally have one of these for review. Uh, this is thanks to uh, Alex's Knife Box on YouTube and also check him out on Instagram at Alex underscore Knife Box. He sent uh, a whole bunch of really cool, uh, really, really amazing knives in for review. This particular one, super, super interesting. Uh, seriously, give him a follow. He also did a really excellent upload with uh, Advanced Knife Bro, where they covered Great Eastern Cutlery Knives. That's uh, <laughs> That was a wonderful uh, and very entertaining upload. You should check that out. But yeah, seriously, go, go subscribe. Go uh, give him a follow. Uh, really, really cool guy. These are available, by the way. You can pick these up. These are uh, classified as, as custom knives. Uh, you can pick them up. I'll link them right down below. There's a wide variety of these at DLT Trading. They are expensive. These are US made customs, right? We're going to talk all about that. I have a lot to say about this. Uh, first off, thanks to my generous patrons for supporting me right now. You can find my Patreon link right down in the description. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Let's go ahead and get some measurements here real quick. Overall length of the busker. This is not a large knife. Uh, coming in at 5.8 inches overall by my measurement. Blade length coming in at 2.5 inches. And cutting edge coming in at about 2.4 inches, something like that, maybe 2.3. That's great. That solves a legal issue for a lot of people. Let's go ahead and do some size comparisons. Up against the Ontario Rat Model 1, you can see there, definitely, definitely not a large knife. How about up against the Spyderco PM2 and Para 3? This is closer to the size of a pair of three, but honestly, it still is quite a bit shorter. Uh, for anybody who's not a huge fan of little knives, you can make a pretty good argument for this. Coming from somebody who does prefer larger knives himself, up against the uh, Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue, uh, and the uh, Benchmade Mini Griptilian, you can see there, um, it's even smaller than the Mini Griptilian. I'll point out though, cutting edge is somewhat close to the mini griptilian. Pretty cool. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about the hardware here real quick. I'll get out my tools as per usual. My tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the description. Uh, we'll turn this over here real quick. I'm going to be very careful because this is beautiful and it has a lot of custom work going on. Uh, T8 on the pivot, I believe. Whoops, bumped the camera. Sorry about that. Uh, the pivot is going to be a T8, yes, and then I'm not going to have to check the body screws. These are going to, I know people are like, we do not care about the size of the screw right now because you're showing us this amazing, beautiful work of art. <laughs> I believe the uh, screws are all going to be T6, and there's uh, a, a couple extra, well, there's one, yeah, and it's a couple extra. I always prefer just two body screws on each side, but that's okay. Not a big deal. If you're going to take it apart, just be careful. It's actually pretty simple in construction. It's a simple frame lock, right? So you'll definitely be able to get into it if you want to. Um, just use caution. These are T6 screws, definitely. Let's go ahead and do carry profile. So thickness up against the Spyderco Para 3. Check that out. Para 3, something that I carry all the time. You can see there it's actually thinner than Spyderco Para 3 by a pretty substantial margin. Uh, let's go ahead and do height and length up against the PM2 and Para 3. Real quick, overall length and height still coming in. Very reasonable, absolutely. Even at maximum height, well, maximum height, we're looking at about exactly the same height. It's down here, right? Now, there are four different blade shapes, so it's going to vary at maximum height. Uh, blade shapes that are available are called Semper Largo, which is what this guy is. This is a Largo. We'll go ahead and get the blade shape out. And then there's Gusto and Vampo, which I don't seem to see often on retailers. That's something that you can find on their website, which again, we'll talk about here in a sec. But yeah, it's going to vary just a little bit depending on which blade shape you pick up for this guy. Um, let's see here. Have we covered everything that we needed to cover there? Yeah, I think so. Um, so uh, this is obviously very beautiful. And I'm going to tell you guys right now, um, these, uh, the Olamic Cutlery is a company that's known for when you, when you pick up a knife from Olamic Cutlery, it's, it's pretty much going to be 
unique. Uh, there are, you know, definitely, especially when you look at more of some of the base designs, the more simple. Obviously, you can get this knife in just a, si a simple V-blasted titanium and satin finish, and I'd imagine there's more of those, you know, floating around. But as far, like, when you get up into the crazier stuff, they're pretty much all going to be unique. And they also... You know, taking a look at their website, their website's awesome. Holy cow. I remember a while back, the first time looking at Olamic Color's website and trying to figure out how to navigate. They have updated that website to the point where, number one, it's easy to navigate. And number two, exploration on the Olamic Color's, uh, the Olamic Color website is just wonderful. Taking a look at all the gallery and the, di if you're, if you're interested in spending a bunch of money on a custom knife that's going to be well made in, in the United States, right? Um, and you want it to be for you. You want it to be your own thing. Oh my goodness. The, the, the level of options for these things is incomprehensible. It is absolutely ridiculous. And they have these amazing galleries where you can go. I, every time I go and look, I'm motivated to, to design one and order one because, or I say design one, choose options. Like I look through the gallery and I'm just like, oh my gosh, look at all these amazing colors and contrasts. It's fun to just go look. It really is. You can pick, like my links down below will be at DLT Trading where there's a healthy supply of these things, right? They're pre-made, they're ready to go. And obviously you can get it to your door a lot faster than if you custom ordered one from the website and they built it especially for you. But if you do want to pick one up that's built specifically for you, you can go and check out their website. It's very easy to use and they've got a ton of really, really interesting models. Um, really, really cool. Now, this has been double customized, I guess. It's, its original form was different than this and uh, it was either Alex or the person who owned it before him sent it back in to have it re-customized, I guess. Olamic Cullery has a Recustomization program, or it's a, there's a better word for it. It's just escaping me. Where if you get you, you love the knife, you just want to give it a different look. Apparently, there's a way to have it recustomized. So that's kind of neat for people who want to do that. Uh, we have this amazing. Now I'm sure Olamic Color calls it something different, but it looks like it's been frosted over, right? It looks like glass or very smooth, a very smooth metal surface that's been, you know, left out overnight and, you know, frost is formed over the top of it. We have this beautiful, uh, this beautiful blue anodized sort of frosty pattern. Then we have a Timascus uh, inlay uh, and then around the pivot collar as well and the pocket clip also. Beautiful. Then we have uh, bronze titanium hardware. This one is definitely going to be on the higher end in terms of price. Uh, the least expensive one that I located on DLT, DLT Trading, much simpler than this, coming in at about $445, which I honestly is completely reasonable. Generally, we talk about price at the end. I'm going to guess the base price of these is probably a, around $400 for the simplest version of this you can get. And you are going to get premium materials, including M390 and titanium. It's going to run on bearings. You can see right there. Um, I think they use a couple of different blade steels, uh, and they might dabble a little bit. In fact, I, I'm certain I've seen Damascus blades or possibly Damasteel blades on their website. So lots of different options. Um, generally speaking, what you're going to see on retailers is probably M390 and then periodically some Damascus stuff. But yeah, that's uh, your price range is anywhere from $400 probably all the way up into whatever you're, whatever you could imagine. Uh, this one's going to be substantially, substantially more expensive. You'll see even less complicated versions of this knife that you're seeing right here coming in at about $750 or even $800 on websites like DLT. And I'm going to guess this one is probably a little bit higher. Anyways, um, let's go ahead and talk about the ergonomics on this guy. Um, I love this knife, and, and this in, in combination with a couple of other knives have actually inspired me to start a new series, which we're going to talk about down the road. But uh, for today, I just want to talk about uh, basically the fact that this is such a small knife. I have this personal thing about knives where if I can't get a full four-finger purchase on it, it's just not something that I want to carry so much. And with this thing being so short, you know, if you were to just read off the specs to me without showing me the knife, I'd probably think it's not going to be for me because I'm not going to be able to get that full grip on it, right? But actually, because of how the handle is shaped and because of this choke-up position we have up here behind the blade, yes, I actually can. I can get a full purchase on this knife, and I can choke up very comfortably behind that blade. I also appreciate, in this case, this is probably the blade shape that I would go with. I appreciate being able to do, you know, positions like this if I want to do more of a draw cut, right, um, or if I want to hold it like this. It's really comfortable in just about every position. I think there's a slight variance on different types of pocket clips that can come with this guy. The, here's the thing, guys. 
I try to, uh, you know, equip myself with as much knowledge about the model before I handle it. But if you go, <laughs> if you go and look at, at Olema Killer's website and you just look at the amount of options that are available, it, it's an impossible. The only person that's going to be able to, like, keep all of that information in their head is actually Eugene, who runs Olamic Cutlery. You know, that that's the only person who's going to know every last little thing. I just, I just don't have quite the brain capacity to keep all of that information in there. But I'll bring you guys the gist of it. Uh, yeah, a couple of different variations. But with this pocket clip, uh, holding on to it, I'm very comfortable, right? If you're going to choke back into a three-finger position, plenty comfortable. Jimping, uh, while I would have liked to see it extend maybe up to here, it actually is in a spot where you can gain traction on it, right? Some of the surfaces that you can get, I would imagine, have more or less texturing. This is a smooth surface, right? Uh, I think even like the inlay positions, like the position of certain inlays, it's not... It's not fixed to where it's like, we'll only do an inlay that's in this position. I think they'll pretty much, they'll, I'm, I don't want to speak for Olamic Cutlery, but from what I've seen on the website, it looks like they'll do almost whatever, whatever it is you're asking for, right? If you really want to make it your own thing, uh, they, they have the capacity to do just about anything. So that's really cool. But ergonomically, it's very comfortable. It's actually a joy to manipulate. This is a front flipper, as you guys have seen, so you have the option to do that, and it works beautifully. The detent's tuned exactly right. The, the uh, hole is positioned in a perfect spot, considering this is such a small blade. Most companies will put the hole way up here, which is fine. It'd probably be easier to do the thumb flick, but you can still, if you position your fingers exactly right, you can still do the thumb flick. But what I, what I appreciate is the fact that it's positioned perfectly on such a small knife to get your middle finger, <laughs> finger, finger in there and do the reverse flick. It's positioned in exactly the right spot. The access to it is just perfect and you can do the spidey drop, which I'm not gonna do because I don't wanna throw it across the table, right? You can also simply pinch open it and just wheel it out, which is nice. Carry profile on this thing, it's nice and compact. This makes it a, a knife that, you know, because it's titan this particular one's full titanium, feels solid, feels very well built, but it's also gonna be incredibly easy to carry despite the height being close to the PM2 and pair three, if not exactly the same. Uh, th this area right here, it's still in and out of the pocket. It's just great, you know, and it's thin enough to where if you're wearing khakis or more fitted pants, it's going to fit in just fine. It's small enough that I think it's more appropriate than knives like, you know, the PM2 in an office setting. And I don't know, I have this feeling that when knives are really extravagant and really have a more jewelry look to them. I'm not calling this pocket jewelry. A lot of people define pocket jewelry as knives that are not meant to be used or are not capable of being used and are just pretty. No, uh, this is not pocket jewelry if that's how you define it, right? Everybody has a different definition of pocket jewelry. This is a knife that is 100% functional and designed to actually be used, both in terms of you know the profile, all the, all the design elements, and then the materials, right? Construction, all that. But when knives are really extravagant looking, they also take on, from my perspective, a less intimidating form, especially when they're smaller like this guy. That's why I say I think it's it fits in a little bit better in your office carry situations or if you go to a cocktail party, formal event, something like that. You get this guy out, it's a little bit less intimidating than something like this that's black and large, right? So that's kind of cool. But it's also going to be right at home if you work outside or, you know, if you just general EDC. This is something that I would throw into the category from my, in my opinion, as just a nice general compact EDC knife that is very easy to manipulate. It's going to do the job, right? It's very comfortable to hold. I love the fact that I can get a full four finger grip on this guy and really choke up behind it. That's really, it's awesome. Blade profile on this guy. Uh, like I said, this is the Largo blade shape. I really hope I'm getting that right. I went off their website, wrote everything down to make sure I got it right. Uh, I love this blade shape. You have a flat that carries out, in this case, about 85% the length of the blade. Um, let's go ahead. You know what we didn't do? I just realized we didn't weigh it. Let's get. Uh, by the way, this has come ever so slightly off center. Uh, I did test this uh, before I started the video. I just gave the pivot a quick turn and it went right back, which is fine. That just means that it just it needs to be Loctited. That's never, you know, if yours is slightly off center, these all, all Olamic colors and any knife, my hinder knives, Expensive, not any knife, right? Generally speaking, if the tolerances are good, if it comes slightly off center, it's just from constantly fidgeting with it. Just need to give the pivot a little bit of a turn and perhaps add a little bit of blue Loctite on it. Um, so not a big deal. It was perfectly centered when we 
uh, right before the video. Um, let's go ahead and measure blade stock on this guy. So we are looking at about 135 thousandths, not too thick, not overly thin either though. And then on the inside, we are looking, you can get my flashlight down in the description. We are looking at titanium solid all the way through. I don't think it, this, this knife of this size necessarily needs to um, be milled. I think that's fine. Total weight on these guys, or on this guy in particular, coming in at 3.07 ounces, which is, ounces, which is perfectly acceptable for me. Uh, judge that how you will. Different variants of these. If you guys have ever looked through Olamic Cutlery, they do. Um, they they have those versions where they mill tons of holes in the titanium all the way through. So I think weight is going to vary by as much as maybe even like three quarters of an ounce if it's one of those that's got like exceptional milling all the way around of it. Uh, all the way around it, right? I'd say it's at, at least an ounce of, uh, I'm sorry, at least half an ounce of variance there. Um, that that would be my guess. So there you go. Uh, this one in particular is satin finished, but again, if you look around, you're going to find that there are a ton of different finishes that you can get on these blades. They do tumbled. I think they do bead blasted. They do kind of an acid wash thing. Uh, and then they've got, you know, the Damascus or the Damasteel option. I don't know if Damasteel is actually an option. It might just be Damascus, but you'll just have to check that out. Um, but yeah, the satin finish on this guy looks great. It's all nice and even. I'm not seeing any belt burn or you know basically just inconsistency in color outside of what i assume are just fingerprints on this guy yeah that's fine um really does look nice uh down to the cutting edge it does get reasonably thin it's not uh you know an absolute laser beam but it's also definitely not what i'd call thick you do have a little bit of a tip here but because of the blade shape it's going to be pretty robust right so i wouldn't worry too much about accidentally snapping the tip off of that guy it's just going to be great for general edc tests you've got a nice belly there's nothing in the cutting path all these corners and edges up here you can see they're nicely knocked down so we don't have any unnecessary sharpness even on a satin finished blade and on the inside of the hole it's also nicely knocked down so you're not going to be doing you know when you do the reverse flick and it kind of shaves your fingernail off i always find that aggravating on some knives but that's not the case here so that's fine you can see it says olamic busker on one side and on the other side, it says M390, and that's all that we see, and I think that's all, really all that's necessary. It's great. The front flipper is extremely easy to dis or I'm sorry, to engage, and uh, the, uh, uh, the titanium lock bar is also very easy to engage because they've cut it out just a little bit on both sides, making it easy to access. Uh, there is a stop pin back here, and you can see that there's just a little bit of shouldering right there, and that's excellent. That's exactly how it should be, in my opinion. We give you guys a nice look at the work here on the scales and actually i'm going to go ahead and just shine it up just a bit because as we do the review my fingers are always all over it so there we go oh boy that is beautiful every last little tiny detail look how they extend this area right here around each screw just to make it i don't know so you can appreciate the surface whatever pattern or whatever anodization color they've got on it in contrast with the color of the screw itself I really like that. There's a lanyard hole right back here. You can see they've even knocked down the edges on the inside of the lanyard hole, nice and large for people who want to use lanyards. We have uh, a polished sort of gear pattern floating backspacer going on right here. I think they've got a ton of different options for the backspacer, polished, not polished, different patterns, different, uh, you know, anodization, the, the, the different colors and things that you can get. Pocket clip is just absolutely stunning. And the pocket clip does go along with the with the knife. This particular one, I think, is, is just fine. It's pretty thick, but there is a continuous rise at the end, in and out of the pocket is fine. This is honestly the, the widest point. This is the part that makes the knife the thickest. But because the pocket clip is contoured and it's sort of spoon-shaped at the end, right, it just doesn't bother me. Um, and the, the angle of carry for me is just fine as well. I really, really like that clip. Uh, depth of carry, there is quite a bit of the knife sticking up out of your pocket. Not crazy, right? We're, to, we're, we're considering how much is sticking up versus what's in your pocket. I'm not going to call it shallow carry. If it was down here, something like that, I'd call it shallow. This is about medium, right? But not a big deal. It's just because of the blade shape and how, how it ends right here. You've got part of the blade, part of the pocket clip, and part of the scale sticking up out of your pocket. Not really that big of a deal. Uh, this does have a steel lock bar insert that doubles as the over treble stop. So that's great. And you can see we're locking up at about 20 to 25%. Like I said, this guy is just right now, it's just ever so slightly off center, but that's not because 
the knife wasn't manufactured well, it's because I've been sitting here flipping it over and over and over again since the last time I tightened it, and it just needs a teeny tiny little crank on the pivot and maybe some Loctite to keep it there. Man, I uh, I really like this. I, I think, I mean, this was obviously designed, you know, for people wanting to carry something more extravagant, more flashy, more of a conversation piece, but at the same time have something that's lightweight or fairly lightweight and compact, and, you know, fidget factor, all that stuff, blade shape, just, it's just a, I mean, it's, it's a companion, right? I mean, it's something that, you know, is, it is expensive. It is, uh, you know, something that's, that's um, really going to cost a lot of money, but you can get it exactly the way that you want it, right? It can be your companion specifically for you. Uh, and it is fun to play with. It's fun to mess around with. And then, yeah, it's going to do exactly what you expect a knife to do, which is handle simple cutting tasks in uh, in the moment, right? It's a, this is a tool of convenience. So I, this is this is kind of exactly what I thought it was going to be. What's the other one? The whippersnapper. I really, really like the whippersnapper. The whippersnapper is a little bit larger than this guy, right? If this seems a little bit small for you, but you still like the idea of it, the whole front flipper thing, you can check out the whippersnapper. That'll be listed uh, down at DLT Trading as well. And I think they've got a pretty healthy supply. Obviously, this isn't going to be for everybody because it's so expensive, right? As far as knives that you can pick up at base for around the $400 mark, um, is this something that I would recommend? Oh my God, yes, absolutely. Oh my gosh. You don't have to buy one that's got, you know, it's, it's an eight or $900 version of this. You don't have to, but you have the option if you want to. And if you, you're like, I still want something simple, but I, maybe I'd like something just a little bit. I just want to add a little bit of sauce to it. Go to their website and look at all the different options that you can get. Honestly, this is one of those where however long it takes them to get you one, it's worth waiting. It's worth waiting just a little bit, truthfully. You know, but they also keep a healthy supply at, uh, you know, retailers like DLT uh, and Blade HQ. And I think possibly... I don't know if GP Knives has them or not, but you can find these things readily available, you know, and they'll, they can be shipped to you if you find exactly what you want. It can be shipped to you probably within a matter of days. Um, but uh, it, it's nice that we have the option. It's nearly infinite different possibilities, different combinations. It's really cool to think that, you know, if I were to pick one of these up, whatever I picked up would likely be unique or at least fairly unique, you know. It's a very, very well made. Action is great. It's very smooth. Because the blade isn't super long, it's not quite completely false shut, but there's no friction or bumpiness on the inside of the pivot. And you can see here, it doesn't take that much encouragement to get the blade to fall. I like this. I don't have many complaints. I think that I think we've got, you know, a couple too too many screws. Not really that big of a deal. They're T6, right? Uh gosh, beyond that, I there's really not much that I can complain about as far as what it seemed like they were going for, and how well it fits into the intended role. I think it's just about perfect. This is an excellent knife. Yeah, you can get knives that will complete simple cutting tasks for substantially less. Yes, you can even get American knives that will complete your, you know, whatever it is that you need from your knife for substantially less, right? The people who are interested in picking these up, it's not like they don't know that those exist. What they want is something more. They want you know, they want an interesting finish. They want an interesting contrast, right? They want specific materials, right? Or maybe they just really appreciate the profile of something like this and they love the idea of, you know, something that's ultra high-end and US made. Make no mistake, there's a lot more work that goes into an Alamic cutlery knife than something like a Zero Tolerance, a Kershaw, right? Whatever other, you know, US uh, standard production knives or your nicer US production knives, right? This is ultra high-end. This is gonna be uh, more in line with your uh, Rick Hinder knives, your Chris Reeve knives, your um, your Les George knives, right? That's that's the tier that we're in, absolutely. And so if you're considering spending money anywhere from the $400 to about the $1,000 mark, uh, is it money well spent with Olamic Cutlery? Yeah. This isn't the first Olamic I've handled. I've actually handled quite a few. I think five or so on this channel. And then I actually owned an Olamic Wayfarer, the original, the huge Wayfarer, I think back in 2015, maybe 2014, something like that. Excellent. Uh, they were excellent then, and they've clearly only gotten better. This is excellent. Uh, highly recommendable. I'll be including this in my custom knives um, playlist and my most recommended knives playlist. So please check those out. 
Be sure to check out Alex's Knife Box on YouTube and uh, on Instagram. Absolutely. Thank you so much for sending this in. Guys, make sure you follow me on Instagram as well. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.